exact values in right angle trigonometry. There are three particular angles that we will get exact values for sine, cos and tan of those angles using two special triangles. We rely on Pythagoras' theorem to do this and you will need to know or be able to work out from the triangles what the exact values are when theta is 45 degrees, 30 degrees or 60 degrees. So you'll actually, unless you are very, very good at remembering the numbers, you'll have to know how to draw these triangles and then how to get the exact values. For the 45 degrees, our special triangle is a right angled isosceles triangle with a side length of 1 and because it's a right angled isosceles our angle here is 45 degrees so is that one now since our two sides have a length of 1 we can find our hypotenuse using Pythagoras c squared equals a squared plus b squared c squared is 1 squared which is 1 plus 1 c squared is 2 so c is the square root of 2 as an exact value change colors so this is our first special triangle an isosceles triangle with base angles of 45 degrees so a right angle triangle side lengths of 1 and the hypotenuse of root 2. Now if we choose this particular angle as our angle of reference theta we label our triangle we have opposite adjacent hypotenuse and we take our ratios sine of 45 degrees now sine of the angle is opposite over hypotenuse cos of the angle is adjacent over hypotenuse tan of the angle opposite over adjacent if we fill this in sine of 45 is 1 over root 2 as you'll recall it's not necessarily useful to have a third on the bottom so if we rationalize the denominator by multiplying by root 2 on root 2, I'll just pop that in in case you wanted to remember how to do that. We would get sine of 45 degrees is root 2, 1 times root 2, on 2. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. Sine of 45 degrees is root 2 on 2. And if you wanted to double check, you could do sine of 45 and look it says root 2 on 2 or there it is as a decimal so you can work out sine of 45 degrees just from that triangle cos of 45 degrees adjacent over hypotenuse well that's going to be the same thing because our opposite and adjacent are the same that's 1 over root 2 so that's also root 2 on 2 and it makes sense that sine and cos of the angle would be the same when I've got 45 degrees because the only way you're going to get 45 degrees in a right angle triangle is to have opposite and adjacent as the same. Tan of the angle opposite over adjacent is 1 over 1 which is 1. Oops, I meant to write 45 up there. Sorry. So for 45 degrees, tan is 1, because both sides are the same. So those are the exact values for sine, cos, and tan of 45 degrees. The triangle that you use to find the angles for 30 degrees and 60 degrees, I actually start with 
an equilateral triangle, which means I've got 60 degrees at all angles of side length 2. And the reason I start with this is it's nice and easy to remember it. A lot of people start with this. This isn't, isn't just my trick. And when you bisect the angle of an equilateral triangle, you'll get a right angle triangle, you'll bisect that angle, and you'll bisect this side. And I only want half of this because I only want a right angle triangle. And that is 60 degrees and 30 degrees, because I've cut that in half. That's still 2, and this side is 1. This is my special triangle for finding the 60 and 30 degree um, exact values. But I find it's easier to remember what it is coming from an equilateral triangle. So we'll start with 30 degrees. Oh, and of course we'll start by finding our unknown side. That will be a squared equals c squared minus b squared. That's 2 squared minus 1 squared. So 4 minus 1 is 3. a is root 3. Work through it with more um, lines of working if you're not sure how I got that. So we'll put in our root 3. And I'll start with 30. So we want sine of 30 degrees, cos of 30 degrees, and tan of 30 degrees. Substitute in our values. Oh, label our sides. We're using 30 degrees as our reference angle, so this is opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Sine of 30, opposite of a hypotenuse, 1 over 2, 1 half. Cos of 30, adjacent over hypotenuse, root 3 over 2. Tan of 30, opposite over adjacent, 1 over root 3. Running out of space. If I redraw that, just so we can label it for 60 degrees, Now, I've got opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. This shows you how uh, closely cos and, tan, uh, cos and sine are related. Because, going back, I want sine of 60 degrees. I want cos of 60 degrees. And I want tan of 60 degrees. Opposite over hypotenuse, root 3 over 2. Have a look. Cos of 30 and sine of 60 are the same. Cos of 60 degrees, adjacent over hypotenuse, 1 over 2. Cos of 60, sine of 30, and sine of 30 are the same. And tan, opposite over adjacent, we have root 3 over 1, which is root 3. Sorry, I hope you can read that that's part of that one there. And again, look, we've got the reciprocal. Interesting. So these are the exact values for 45 degrees, 30 degrees, and 60 degrees. We will also need to know the exact values for a couple of other things, um, 0 degrees and 90 degrees to start with. These are the exact values that you get from a triangle. And a question that you might use, uh, use this for is when you're asked to use the trig ratios to find the exact value of x, oh, which is our side length here, without a calculator. OK. Let's make this our angle. Label your sides as you would for any problem. Opposite over hypotenuse, we're going to use sine. Sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. We're still following our steps. Label your side, choose your ratio. 
but our angle is 45 degrees. So you go back to your 45 degrees, and I'm doing sine of 45 degrees, so I know that's root 2 on 2. So for sine of 45, which is what I've got, x over 6, I substitute in root 2 on 2, because I know that's what it equals. I want x on its own. I would multiply both sides by 6. times root 2 on 2 and if I can cancel which I can here because I have a common factor of 3 at uh, 2 <laughs> I have 3 root 2 that is the exact value of the side X found without a calculator if you preferred at this point you could continue to solve this the way that you normally would 6 sine 45 degrees equals x and then substitute in your exact value so you have 6 times root 2 on 2 equals x x equals as we just worked out 3 root 2 so if you prefer to rearrange because you're very good at rearranging this step and then substitute in our exact value you can if you prefer to substitute here and then rearrange, you can. Either of these ways of showing this is fine.